Hi, it's Ed again, talking about snare drum technique, segment three. Uh, I assume that you've looked at segments one and two. If you haven't, please do, otherwise segment three is not going to make much sense to you. Okay, so segment three is going to be about our modified molar stroke played with traditional grip because we already know that match grip is going to do it the way the right hand did it, the left hand is going to do it. Hold it the same way, get the same response, same open fulcrum, all that good stuff we talked about in the first two segments. All right, so what we're going to do here is do, I'm going to start with the right again, and then I'm going to do it with the left so that you can compare the two. So the right was one and two and three and four. I'm on doing this at 60. Left hand, tap in a stroke. So it's that simple. So it looks, first time you try it, boy, especially folks with their left hand, they're so used to playing like this that it's really uncomfortable. But you'll get it. And three, and. You have to release your fingers to allow the stick to bounce. It's not a crime. You won't be put in jail for that. Now, so you got the picture. Again, one thing I didn't mention in the first two segments, which I should have, but I'll mention it now, is that just as this fulcrum here is nice and loose, the stick is suspended in the hand, same way over here too. Because if I squeeze this thing, again, it locks up the whole arm, just as holding like this locks up this arm. Now I didn't say you never hold a stick like this, because you might need to hold like that to get a particular attack, especially if you're a symphonic percussionist, where you need to get all sorts of different kinds of sounds. So I'm not saying this is wrong, I'm just saying this isn't your starting point. This is where you go from this. If you start with this, you're in trouble, because you have nowhere to go. If you start with this, you've got all sorts of ways that you can manipulate the stick. Okay, so, now, something else I didn't talk about, again, it's always those obvious things that you have to come back to, is where you hold the stick. feels awful. Ouch! That feels awful too. There's too much wood out there, right? So, okay. I know. It's ridiculous. So what I'm saying is you've got to find the point on the stick, like with traditional grip, where it bounces. Now watch what happens if I tighten the fulcrum. It dies. And the same would happen over here, too. If I start it bouncing, and I tighten up, it goes away. So I can't give you any better example than that when it comes to learning how to control upstrokes and rebound. Keep the fulcrums loose, relaxed. Control comes from degrees of looseness, not tightness. Remember that. So, three and four. Nice molar stroke, lifting from the butt of the stick. Nope, this is important too. Folks, when they first try this, they go like this. Instead of going tap and up, they go put a big preparatory stroke like that. They'll go. Now, I hate to say it, I'm not one for right and wrong with this. I'm, you know, anything has its place, but that's wrong because all we want is tap, stroke, not hear the we lose the dynamic contour. Now, those of you who are thinking, say, okay, what this guy's really talking about is developing a musical accent technique where the stroke or the tap determines the loudness or the softness rather than brute force, right? Okay. So, same way here. Not, it's not. You see that preparatory stroke? It's another thing. Put a mirror in front of yourself when you practice this so you can see it. Because it's amazing what your body will do if you don't pay attention. It'll go back to its old habits. I know, because I've been there. So, tap, stroke, tap, and then the bounce. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and four. Now, I'm sure some of you are familiar with the term staccato and legato. It's a basic thing that we deal with on the instrument. We play some rhythms that are legato sounding, some that are staccato sounding. Now obviously this, this technique lends itself to a more legato sound. And even on this pad, 
you hear, hear the difference. When I go from the molar to, the, to level, boy, is it hard to keep this in time like this. That's my problem. But you hear how stiff that sounds? It's sharp and staccato. I didn't say it's wrong. I'm saying if this is your technique and somebody says, hey, I want some flowing legato rhythms, you're in trouble. But, now the way this exercise works is we learn to alternate the doubles. And we try to make the accents the same in each hand. This is a great warm-up exercise, especially when you do this. You go from my quarter, from the quarter notes to eighth notes. Now, where am I catching the rebound? If I let it play, you hear the 16th and it. If I didn't catch the rebound, it would look and sound like this. But now what's happened to all the strokes? Am I using as much arm? Nope. Why? Because there's no time for all that big stroke. But you notice the wrists are still loose, the fulcrum's still loose. There's back to the quarter. Now I'm going to subdivide, go to the eighth, and same dynamic level, even though it's a shorter stroke because there's greater velocity. Now I'm going to go to sixteenth notes. Got my left stick holding it, that multiple maximum bounce point, not too far back on the butt, not too far up. Now, I'm going to change this to the level system and listen to the difference. This is if you're in drumline, maybe some of you are playing like this. That's good. That's good for drumline. Hear how that changes? Everything smooths out. Why? Because I practice this. And if you practice it, you'll get it too. Now, if I want to be humbled, all I have to do is say, okay, these are 16s. What about if I try to go to 30 seconds? Okay, buckle your seat belts. Lucky day. Okay? But you see how it works. And you think, hey, baby, I've got chops to burn now. All you have to do is take that metronome and instead of starting it on 60, start on 70. Those 30 second notes all of a sudden become very, very vicious to get out. All right, so this is a lifetime exercise. I'm presenting it in a very short amount of time. It's a very deep technique and I hope that you will explore it and especially if you have a teacher who can show you this. We all need teachers. We're all beginners. I'm just a little more advanced because I've been doing it longer. But we're all beginners, and the more we can find guidance from people who know more than we do, have more experience, the easier our own journey is. So find a teacher who can teach this stuff to you. It makes it a lot easier. All right. That's it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.